When the trailer came out for Wild Mountain Time, a lot of people were quite irate over the accents in the film, and I don't blame them. But after I saw the film, all I wanted to do was go to Ireland and absorb the beauty. Maybe take a, a walking tour. A Christopher walking tour. Welcome to Real School, the film channel that with that accent probably just put the ire in Ireland. I'm your host Michael Wynn Johnson and today I will be reviewing Wild Mountain Time. Of course as you're watching the video if you like what you see please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you're unfamiliar with this movie then you're clearly unfamiliar with the most entertaining aspect of 2020, Irish Twitter. Because when this trailer came out, man did every Irishman tear it apart. They haven't been this upset since the casting of the Irishman. But let's give you a little background information first. This film is brought to you by John Patrick Shanley, possibly the most Irish named filmmaker out there, even though he's just Irish American. The fact of the matter is though, he also has one of the most fascinatingly bizarre and diverse filmographies out there. This is a man who's written Joe vs. the Volcano, Alive, Moonstruck, Doubt, and Congo. And I should actually preface that I'm a huge fan of his filmography as well. This man has won two Oscars a Tony, a Pulitzer, so the boy can write. So let's move on. And let's address the green elephant in the room. Now I take that personally, but the fact is this man can create some of the most horrific situations ever put on film. A plane crash that results in cannibalism, bloodthirsty killer gorillas, or falling in love with a young Nick Cage. The fact is nothing compares to the horror of this film and its accents. Listen, when they were casting this film, they thought, we can cast Emily Blunt. She's talented, she's beautiful. Maybe she can do the accent. She can't. But casting Christopher Walken in any part that requires him to do any accent is beyond me. I mean, Emily hits her accent once or twice during the film. It's really inconsistent. It's not strong, but at least she does hit it once or twice, kind of like a broken clock is right twice a day. But can you imagine the dialect coach on this film? Christopher, I want you to repeat after me. I'll have a drink. I'll have a drink. Not quite. Let's just try it one more time. I'll have a drink. I'll have a drink. You know what? I probably will have a drink. So no longer does Tom Cruise have the worst Irish accent ever put to film. However, let's move on. The fact of the matter is I'm also a real fan of Shanley's romantic comedies. Moonstruck is one of my guilty pleasures. That movie is a lot of fun for me. It should be noted that Wild Mountain Time is also based off of Shanley's play Outside Mullingar, which was written about seven years ago. Now, I'm not sure what the play was like. It had some critical success, but didn't last very long on Broadway. But if it's anything like the film, I don't know what to say about it because the film seemed really watered down, derivative even. There are two lovers who can't admit their feelings for one another. There's a love triangle and that third suitor we just know isn't right for her. We don't like him all that much because he's not the one. The older generation is kind of down to earth and charming, but the younger generation is quirky and cute. I understand cute and quirky. I have studied the filmography of Zoe Deschanel. But imagine taking cute and quirky up to 11. That's like putting nine more O's in her name. The problem with this is that the story is too familiar, but the characters are unfamiliar. They're almost unlikable and they're definitely unrelatable. The courtship between Emily Blunt and Jamie Dornan's character at times was even painful to watch. Which is too bad because the film is not bereft of charm. Anybody who has Irish blood in them can relate and loves that kind of old school charm of the home country. It kind of warms the cockles of your heart as Walken would say. And the fact is as much as I mock Walken, he does give a very good and heartfelt performance. There are a lot of tender moments for him and believe it or not, he's believable. Probably more so if the movie was on mute. But as much as I believed Walken as a cold, emotionally distant Irish father, that might have more to say about my family because every time there was a moment of truth within this film, there was also a real ham-fisted moment of, here's Ireland for you. It personally ended for me when one of the characters, an Irishman of course, says, a man with feelings ought to be put down. That's one of the most stereotypically Irish things you can get a character to say other than me pot of gold. It could be a case that the play is just not that adaptable for the screen. It could be a case that this play being larger than life just doesn't really fit on the screen. Or it could be a case of Shanley just being overconfident in his work and not really putting the work in to adapt it properly for the screen. Either way, it just turned out as a burn it. 
Either way, it was also definitely the accents. Poll question, who's your favorite Irish actor? And I mean real Irish, not, you know. As always, leave your answers in the comments section below. But until next time, school's out. Hey Real Students, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe to Real School, click that round Real School logo right beside me. Also click that damn notification bell so you're aware of all of Real School's new content. You can follow me on Twitter and of course, if you get anything out of Real School, you can always give a little back. Just click the link in the description below or the button down there and you can become part of my Patreon team.